انا اللي بعتذر انا اللي اسف حبيت اتحركشك وانا ماشي بالسياره بس يمكن ما طلعت كثير مهضوم انت مو كنت بامريكا هلا صرت هون بالبلد مزبوط صار لي سنتين عايش بكاليفورنيا بامريكا بس من يومين وصلت على البلد شوفي هالصدفه ما احلاها لما شفتك صدقيني ما صدقت عيوني نطلع <تصفيق> بالاخير قرايبين ليش ما قلت لي انك زوجي لزمورة زمورة زمورة ايه مرتك زمورتي هني للنسبة بالبير هني يلا يا شباب انتبهوا له خواصروا يلا يلا هني يا أبام حسين يلا يلا What is important for Jay is not celebrity and stardom. Deep in his heart, in his quintessential being, he is an actor, he is somebody who performs. You don't know who I am, huh? Do you? Guest is uh, Jay Abdul. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Jay. Hi. Thank you so much. I want to start with you. Since you started acting in Romania, how did you get involved with acting during studying there? Uh, it all started as an amateur. We went. I went to Romania, Romania to study civil engineering mm -hmm. in '79. Wow. And yeah, it was That's a long time uh, ago. <laughs> and I I was always gravitated or I was always by the arts. I, I play I play violin so and I like to sing and so I was like fascinated with movies and theater and acting and all this stuff. So for the Syrian Students, they gave us like they designated one day that we have express our culture on stage, and so, so. they asked me to play violin for the uh, for the songs and the music and the dances, and I said I want to act as well. So they gave me a line. The next day they gave me more. And in like uh, in the year third year fourth and the fifth. I was almost everyone. I mean, I, I was uh, lead in the play, in the plays, and we were playing and performing on stage in Romanian language. And very, very good reviews followed. Very good reviews. So my dean invited me over for dinner, and he said, you go back home and study acting. Become an academic actor. And I was like, I was <laughs> shocked. I said, you, sir, my dean, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm graduating. I'm almost uh, an engineer. And he told me, you will remember this forever. And this is what I did. I went back home to Syria, Damascus, mm -hmm. applied for the institute, for the drama school. I was accepted. And I studied four more years of acting. So did you find it difficult to start acting in Romanian, that language that you were starting to learn? Uh, um, I have, I, I think I'm so lucky to be gifted for languages. And I think it's a, it's a new thing. It's a hearing thing. Because I, I learned, I learned uh, Romanian language very, very quick. In no time, I started to speak, to write. In the second year, nobody could uh, differentiate me from the, from the Romanian people speaking. When it comes to when it came to speaking, so I, I didn't feel I didn't feel I was performing in another language. No, I didn't. It, it was so spontaneous. All my reactions, my actions, my thoughts were in that language. So I didn't. So was, after coming to the U.S., did you ever felt like giving up acting because of difficulties in to in to in, to break the industry here? Yes, yes, it wasn't, it wasn't easy, but, uh, well, in the first place, I didn't want to leave Syria, because I had a wonderful career back home. We all and, know it, sure. And I was forced to leave it. I was forced to leave 
my country, my my comfort zone, and my wonderful career, my friends, and my circle, and my family, and my memories. I didn't want to leave anything of that. And uh, something else I want to say that I'm an activist, so I was interested in helping children. I was interested in helping people, uh, I mean, children started with cancer and some other children. So I was focused on humanitarian um, efforts. And that's why it was a little bit difficult for me to leave. But the situation became a little bit uh, frightening and scary for me. And I didn't choose the United States. The U.S. chose me, chose me because my wife was already here studying. So, so you joined her and... Joined her. Yes. And I thought maybe one month, two, three, five, and we go back to a new Syria. Things went from bad to worse. Yeah, everything is going worse now. Yes, and we decided to stay. Yeah. And for me as an actor, being here in Los Angeles, uh, among millions, tens yeah. of millions sure. of people coming from all over the globe to give it a try in acting, it's not easy, especially for a top 10 in my country, coming here, auditioning for one line, or maybe non-speaking roles. Yeah. And uh, I didn't give up. I didn't give up because this is what I want to do in life, acting. I know, I know my skills, I know my capability. I emailed managers and agents everywhere in Los Angeles. I, tens, I mean thousands of emails, all ignored. All ignored. And uh, uh, so few of them would say, do you have anything done in the U.S.? Yeah. And I would say, you will take my hand to the next level and we'll make crazy money. Mm -hmm. Let us know when you have something done here. And I kept pushing hard, hard, uh, going to auditions. Uh, I'm so is this up. when you get father's uh, reveal? Uh, sorry? Is this when you got uh, father's reveal? The oh, role? Father's Revenge. Reve Revenge yes. Yeah. Uh, I, it, I managed to, to be in one year, in one year, I managed to be in four short movies and one feature. No money, no payments, nothing, nothing at all. Just credit and experience. And yes, it was a, it was a student movie, student film, oh. and the documentaries as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, a feature film called, a uh, dark comedy called We've Got Balls. So, in one year, it was good. I mean, so many American actors would tell me, Jay, you are doing great. I wasn't happy, but I was like not knocking on the door, knocking on this big, very big door, till I, uh, uh, till I met with the... Uh, so we will get this point later on. What are the differences that you were not expecting between Syrian drama and Hollywood that you found out when you started? Well, let me tell you something that in the United States, this industry is highly protected by uh, strong unions. It, it's ruled by very strict rules and protected. So, Everyone in the industry, the talents, the crew, everyone is protected and he feels he is protected. While in Syria or in the Middle East, um, the union didn't protect me, they didn't protect anyone. In so many cases, I wasn't paid. Uh, we're talking about huge money. I wasn't paid. Yes, of course. So and all, let me say, the vast, the vast majority of the production companies belong to the family, to Assad family. Mm -hmm. So you cannot, you cannot fight for your rights, you know? Yeah, it's hard to... It's hard, and the union couldn't do anything. Yeah. They just told me to be patient, to wait, and you know, empty promises. Yeah. And something else, what I want to say about the, the, the industry here, uh, movies, TV, or theater, uh, you have more freedom to talk about topics 
and issues. While in the Middle East, it depends where you are, uh, you can talk about anything. You can talk about everything. So you, you are limited uh, maybe with uh, very narrow uh, space of topics or things you want to talk about, you know? Mm -hmm. So you, you feel, you feel you are limited. You feel it, you feel it, you feel it. So in how would you... It's, it's a place where rejected by the government because uh, it's not time, it's not the suitable time. Or TV shows, or films. Yeah, so how would you describe the Hollywood culture? It's, a, it's an open culture, it's progressive, sometimes materialistic, sometimes, I mean, you find everything here. Uh, they're very good, when I'm, when I'm they very good movies, uh, paper-wise, when it comes to ideas and progressive ideas to make this world a better place. And they're big projects as well, with money and funds, Where's no message, just entertainment. Just entertainment to spend time and to see these special effects or... And uh, you find everything here. I mean, uh, that's why everyone from the world wants to be in Hollywood. All artists and musicians want to be, to join Hollywood. And it's, it's exposure. I mean, in Syria you're talking to the Arab world, mm -hmm. you're addressing the Arab world, while in Hollywood you're addressing the whole whole globe, the whole world. So how was it like shooting uh, Queen's, Queen of the Desert? It was, it was a great, a fantastic experience from so many points of viewpoints. I mean, first of all, working to be cast by Werner Herzog in a major role in his movie. This is too big, because this man, this artist, this legend, is, is a school, is a, I mean, each minute with him, each day was like reading a book. And uh, he, he loved my performance, and he was taking care of me, I felt that. He put his effort to present me or to, to expose me to people the best way, you know? And working opposite Nicole Kidman. This so I was about to ask you this question. Oscar winning actress and wonderful human being. Wonderful lady, very smart, extremely talented, and so generous. When we were in a scene, she did her best. So Jay would be better in this scene. Of she course. was only always yeah. she was always taking care of me being performing better. I, I, I won't forget her. She spoke about me in the media and I love her and it was I mean uh, uh, I'm so I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. My wife keeps telling me you are so lucky to be cast by Werner Herzog opposite Nicole Kidman in the first big break. So it's, it was great. It was amazing, fantastic, unforgettable memories. So you also had a role in a hologram for, for the king. How would you describe that experience? Uh, well, at the beginning, they were casting in Germany. And they sent me a scene uh, for the audition. I did, I did the scene, I sent it back, and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, Tom Tickver, opposite Tom Hanks, oh my god, please, please, god, please, I want this part. Two days later, I received an email that mm -hmm. we welcome you on board. I almost cried. I go there, and the first minute meeting with Tom Tickver was amazing. Very smart guy, very, oh my goodness, so talented. Then, meeting with... <laughs> How was it, Tom meeting Hanks. with Tom Hanks? 
How was I, the meeting? What I can say about Top Hat, uh, you know, I've been with so many stars over the world. So many, so many. I've, I've been working professionally since 92. I worked with so many. But the first encounter with Tom Hanks, I could say I've never encountered, I've never spoke to a more uh, generous, humble, well-read, uh, funny, and talented star in my life. Very nice. Amazing. And uh, you speak four languages flu fluently, and you play, yeah. and you play violin. So, have your talents helped you act in the acting career? I think so. Yes, um, because when you speak languages, you are more personalities. I, I audition for Spanish-speaking roles, uh, Romanian or Russian, because I do speak Russian. I speak five languages. Oh, and, I missed uh, the Russian one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I auditioned once in German. I don't speak German, mm -hmm. but I can, I can, uh, I can manage for one line or two, if it's a, 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 a front of the camera. So I don't have problem with, with any with any language. So languages always help me, being more personality, more, or to pass in so many roles, and. Being a player, a violin player, like in Queen of the Desert, I used the violin, so I used the rababi, you know the rababi. Yes. It's uh, the primitive indigenous instrument from the desert, uh, made, of, made out of uh, leather and wood. And it fits the area, it fits the, the region. And I asked Werner Herzog, I said, can I play as we travel on camel's back for days and nights? Uh, Nicole and me, I play her uh, guide in the desert. Could he play this indigenous instrument? And he said, uh, I don't think Fatouh would play an instrument. Then he stopped for a minute and he said, bring the fiddle. Bring it with you. Yes. And there, he asked me to play. And I played. It was great. It sounded great and it fit, fit at the moment, you know? So it helps, okay. yeah, it helps. So we are currently working on Bon Voyage. Tell us more about it. Wow, Bon Voyage is a short movie about the refugees drowning in the, in the Mediterranean. It's a Swiss, uh, Swiss production company with a Swiss director and Swiss actors, Syrian actors and Turkish actors. It happens in the Mediterranean in the same place in the same spot where those refugees drowned. We didn't film in a studio. We filmed in the same place where people died or passed away. It was, for me, as a Syrian refugee, as a Syrian activist, as a, as a women's rights activist as well, because the Syrian woman paid the higher price in this revolution. So for me, it wasn't, I mean, it was great filming in this movie. It wasn't pleasant. It wasn't a pleasant, it was a harsh experience. And I felt I need to do it. We need to send the message to the whole world to show the world who the re those refugees are, why they are fleeing their country, why they are dying, why they are fleeing death to another death. So uh, it was, uh, the paper is great. The story is uh, amazing. Um, and the director, I think, I think we're, we're going to grab some awards, I hopefully, um, he did his best, and uh, we had this wonderful cast and wonderful crew as well, um, all Turkish. So, yeah, it was a great experience, um, and uh, it wasn't easy flying for 20, 20 hours, then the very next day being in the sea for 
That was a long day. That was a long trip. A long and very tiring, very tiring. Yeah. But, but we, we need it. We need it. So thank you so much, and we hope so that all your your movies and you won like great awards and we hope you will best in Hollywood for the next uh, coming movies maybe. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so Always much. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye.